Hey, welcome to Tech Tuesday, where we're going to show you new tech and tools. About the middle of last year we helped put a laser engraver together and I'll be honest with you I was very intrigued with it and we are thinking about doing an Etsy shop and what we're planning on doing is creating some leather patches that go on top of hats that say Tony's Tractor Adventure and we're gonna start doing our own Etsy shop so first thing we needed to do was get a laser engraver we didn't want to go crazy because it's not a very complicated task to uh, engrave these patches. You can put like 20 of them down and do 20 at a time. So we're going to start out small. You guys hang with me to the end. We put this thing together and I was so proud. Uh, I had some success and I didn't burn the house down. Also at the end, I will talk about some add-on items that I wished I had got and will get. So I'm a very much a novice at laser engravers and I treated this like it was my first time even though I have set up one other laser engraver. I just basically got enough experience with the first one to know that I have the bug for this now. So this longer engraver came very well packaged. Everything was intact and uh, spoiler alert, we put it together and all the pieces were there. Nothing was missing. The little hardware bags had the step number marked on the bag and that was in correlation with the actual assembly manual. Also, speaking of the manual, the manual is written very clearly in good English. Well, as good as English as this old southern boy can understand. I recommend setting this up on a flat surface and you put the little L brackets in and you can just barely snug them up. But I recommend not tightening the L brackets up until you put this hex head screw in. Go ahead and put the hex head screw in making sure that the frame is flat and get it, give it a pretty good tightening and then you'll do all four corners and then come back and really tighten your L brackets up. This seemed to keep everything in line. You can see here where I'm coming back and I'm tightening up the L brackets after I've already tightened up the end Allen screws or hex head screws. Once the frame was put together, the X armature rolled right on. Once I rolled this on, I, it, it reinforced that feeling that when you first get out of the box, everything just has a good quality feel about it. And when you feel the rollers rolling back and forth, it, it just reinforces that feeling. Next, you'll see at the top left corner, there is a stop screw. And the bottom one, at the bottom left corner, you have to put in place. And this keeps the uh, armature from rolling off or coming off. Now, this is just a little piece of plastic on a, that's wrapped around this screw. Don't go crazy tightening it down. Then I went on to start installing the controller unit. It mounts in the front left corner and it's held together by two screws. The other three corners have these metal legs which have a, a little rubber foot on the bottom so make sure you get those aimed the right way. And the screws will are marked in the little package. This is pretty easy to understand, so I won't go really in depth in this. The X-axis timing belt is already in place, but on the Y-axis, you'll have to install it yourself. You see the little, little teeth on the rod there. That's what pulls the head back and forth on the Y-axis. You have to wind it through and pull the little belt all the way through and there's another one on the other side that's basically the identical process. Okay. 
So there's a little slit that you just push the belt through and then you can put the little locking nut in place. Now let me show you how to put that locking nut in place. You just put it in long ways and then you're just gonna kind of rotate it around. Once you get it rotated around, put it to the center of the frame and then next we'll put just put the uh, screw in. Don't go crazy and tighten this down really, really tight because it will warp the belt. Just put it snug. Do this on all four sides and, and you want to keep in mind that when you tighten up one end that you need to make sure that it's got a little bit of pressure on it because this is what pulls the head back and forth. So you don't want that belt to be loose, but you don't want it to be over tight either. The, so there's the limiter switch. And it shows that this on the, you have to turn it upside downwards and you know, back this limber switch up to the tape. And once you pass it, put the little metal piece in first and then pull it back down to the back of this touches the white tape. Okay, that's one limit switch right there. So while it's upside downwards, you're going to do the same thing again. You're going to take the T-lock, as I'll call it. Rotate it around. Right, now I've got it started. I'm going to do a slide it over until it touches the tape. These are plastic so don't tighten too tight. Go ahead and slip the laser head on. This is a 20 watt laser so be gentle. Set it all the way to the table and we'll get back to adjusting that out in a minute. So next I started putting in the wiring harness and if you look each one of the plugs have a appropriate mating receiver and so having said that it's just about impossible to put this wiring harness on wrong uh, but i'll go ahead and leave the video show going here so you can see what happens and after that we'll use some zip ties to tie it up and we'll make sure that the travel works correctly hit away up under there okay They're all the, they're all different, so you can't put the wrong one in the wrong thing. This is going to be able to go all the way that way. And all the way that way. Let's see. Zip tie this right here. Next, we're going to go ahead and zip tie the wire harness up. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you leave enough slack in the wiring harness that the head can travel on the X and Y axis and not be uh, not not make the wiring harness uh, become taut. So you'll see here that I leave a little bit of extra, and then after I get it all zip tied back and forth, then I'll move the whole carriage back and forth. I just want to make sure that everything is working okay. I got this cutting accessory which allows me to cut on like top of my kitchen table without causing damage. Obviously I, I guess you could probably overdo that. But I wanted to go ahead and get started. I think this is probably one of the neatest features I've seen on a, a laser etcher. And it, This laser engraver, if you look at this, it has this little tab that you turn around and you just set it down till it touches whatever you're getting ready to engrave and that tells you that it's far enough down it's perfectly focused it's super simple but it just works and some of the other ones they have auto focusing and that doesn't always work this little simple thing right here is just spot on so now we're getting to the moment of truth we are going to plug the power cable in and push the button i have been dying to push the silver button since i started playing with this and yeah it's just the way i work 
So this is a little mini SD card that come with the unit and it has like some basic graphics that are already in there that you can just start printing right away. It also has like the manual and some other software that's on there. Uh, however, you can go to the longer website. It's got a really good support page and you can upgrade the firmware. Uh, it has like some free software that you can use. It's, it's, it's really well supported and I was proud to see that because sometimes you'll get these things and you go to the website and there's just no help. So I messed around and didn't video me actually putting the card in and pushing the button. All I did is put it in and I, it showed a little file there that showed the, the longer logo. I clicked on that and pushed go. And this is what happened. I'll go ahead and speed this up. My next video that's coming out soon will show you how uh, I uploaded my Tony's Tractor Adventure logo and burnt it on for the first time using uh, a couple of different softwares. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and let you guys look at it. I really appreciate you watching our channel. I'll leave a link in the description of this video uh, if you're interested in this unit. So far, sir, I've had it a couple of weeks now and it's done everything that I have asked it. Uh, I just now got around to editing the setup video. I look forward to showing you more. So I promised you a couple things I wished I had got at the beginning and that is this little tent that goes over the top of your laser engraver and it has a fan that ejects or sucks the little smoke out and you can like make a little adapter and blow it out your window. The other thing is the air assist. Now what the air assist does is it blows a stream of air right at the point where the laser uh, is hitting, hitting whatever you're burning and it keeps the smoke away and that makes it have a crisper picture. Those are the things that I, I will be getting in the future. God bless. Have a great day.